Well, today's episode we're going to feature, of course, since it's Thursday, we normally initiate with more with the Impact and Ring of Honor. But, however, out of my surprise, I did not know that because I haven't been keeping track with New Japan Pro Wrestling recently. Apparently, we have the more road of uh, wrestling Dondaku, but we have two title matches that will be on the line, and both of them are part of the Junior Heavyweight Division. The first one features, of course, the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. The Inter uh, Intergalactic Jet Setters, Kevin Knight, and Kushida take on United Empire's Catch-2-2, TJP, and Francesco Kara. And then finally, our main event, we have Hiromu Takahashi taking on um, Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Th this is going to be an interesting matchup. But also, we got some news updates to share what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay, right here. So let's begin with New Japan Pro Wrestling with Road to Wrestling Dondaku. So we're not that far off to that big pay per view. As you know, we only have two title matches involved in this one, but. Let's check out the recent matches that are taking that took place. Uh, we have the Young Lions, consistent of Bolton Oleg and Oscar Lobe, taking on the members of the United Empire, more consistently Aaron Hanare and the Great Okan. Now, I have to say I like this combination in the Young Lions with Oleg and Lobe. I'm, I'm going to presume these two gentlemen are either uh, I'm, I'm going uh, European or both German. I don't know. But it was a good combination. But however, I, as you know, with Young Lions, they're normally supposed to lose to wrestlers like the United Empire. Uh, it was, of course, Aaron Hanare with the full Nelson lock onto, uh, who was it? Onto Lobe, forcing him to tap. Next match, we got the House of Torture. All four members, Togo, Sho, Yujiro, and Evil, Taking on the members of Chaos, consistent of Toru Yanu, Yo, Yoshihashi, and Hiroki Goto. Now, this thing has gone a little too crazy because recently, as you know, Goto has uh, celebrated his 20-year anniversary. But Evil had other intentions in mind that tried to force Goto into retirement. But Goto is not going to go down without fighting, no matter what Evil does. And not to mention every shenanigans that, uh, that House of Torture does always backfires. But... In this case, it was, of course, the combination of Shoto onto Ghetto, onto Dick Togo that allowed for Chaos to walk away as the victors. Next match, we got the Bullet Club, consistent of Ishimori, Kenta, and Finley taking on Master Wato, Hikuleo, and Tamang, uh, Tamatanga. Now, as you know, we know that Hikuleo is going to face Kenta for the NJPAW Strong Openweight Championship, while the le the newest leader of Bullet Club, Finley, will face Tama Tonga for the Never Openweight title. So we all know the previews, but how would this turn out? Well, this would put a little bit of the vote of confidence in David Finley's ability in order to become the brand new Never Openweight champion when he applied the Trash Panda onto Wato, giving him the win. But you know this is a message to uh, the Bullet Club too. The brothers telling them they'll be coming for their belt, coming for them no matter what. The Kenta will be retaining his title, while Finley will be the one to dethrone Tamataga. Next match, we have TMDK. All three members who are involved in the upcoming matches against the members of the United Empire. We're talking about Shane Haste, Mikey Nichols, and of course the frontman, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Taking on Jeff Cobb and Ozzy Open. Now this is a pretty good preview, not to mention... Last time these guys faced off, um, Costa Fujita ended up being the one, the 
lose the match, but however, they have to remain strong. I have to say, this match was a pretty good example to show a preview against Aussie Open, as you know, our current IWGP Tag Team Champions, but it was, of course, the Tank Buster onto um, Kyle Fletcher. Kyle Fletcher and then uh, um, Hayes Pin Fletcher, one, two, three is over. Sending a direct message that maybe this will be the end of the Aussie Open being declared as the best tag team. So we'll see what happens until we get there. Next up, we have a combination of GBH, uh, Tohamna, Makabe, and teaming with members of Chaos consistently with Ishii um, and Okada. Now, their opponents, this is a very interesting combination. We have Shota Umino with the members of Strongheart, Renarita, El Desperado, and, of course, Minoru Suzuki. Now, we know recently um, Desperado started getting in the face of not, an Ishii, but here's the best part. Ren Narita decided to put the never open weight six man tag team on the line against Ishii. I mean, against Okada. So Ishii is the second member, so it's still unclear who will be the third. But the match was pretty in, 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 in interesting how this is going to go. But it was, in fact, Shota Umino with the Death Rider onto, uh, who was it? Hamna that allowed them to win. But there was an interesting comment that, of course, that Shota Umino made about Strong Style, calling them that. You guys are like another version of um, of Suzuki Goon. So basically, it's like I don't I don't necessarily like to agree with him saying that it is because Suzuki Goon were like the baddest and baddest SOBs on the planet. Like they just beat up anybody to get their way. But I think the direction with Strong Style is a lot more different than Suzuki Goon what they were back then. So I, I I hate to say that maybe I disagree with Shota, but if he knew exactly what Strong Style were all about, then he he'll You'll eventually see it. Next up, we got the members of LIJ, Bushi and Shingo, taking on just five guys, Taichi and Sonata. This is a very interesting team up. Now, Shingo and Bushi she hasn't teamed up for a while since Shingo transitioned to heavyweight a couple years back. But uh, nonetheless, this is more like a message for Shingo to Taichi since he decided... He's going to put the KOPW title on the line against Taichi. But Sonata, he has to focus on his next opponent, which, surprise, surprise, was Hiromu Takahashi. But I figured this match was going to be good, but it was, of course, um, Sonata with the skull end onto Bushi that allowed him to win the match, but also sending a direct message to Taichi to um, Shingo, telling him that he'll be coming for his belt. I'm sure many of us would like to see... Uh, Taichi with the KOPW title. Next up, we got Doiki representing uh, just five guys taking on the leader of LIJ, Tetsuya Nato. I thought this match was pretty good. I have to say one of the best matches seen with Doiki, despite that he lost this match, was pretty good. I mean, we've seen what he can do in the ring. We know he had big upsets in the past, but this one was a very interesting one. But he applied the Doki Choki a few times onto Naito, but it didn't work until Naito applied Destino onto him, allowing himself to win the match. So, it was pretty good. Now, our next match is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Titles between the Intergalactic Jet Setters, Kushida and Knight, taking on Catch 2-2s, uh, uh, TJP, and Francisco Caro. This match was awesome. But, once again, we saw another bloody moment Instead, if you guys remember, we saw this with, with Chaos, more consistently with Rush and um, and Yo. When we saw um, Leo Rush, he was bleeding up. Now we see TJP in that predicament. But it wasn't the, nothing major like what they did. But in fact, it was interesting. But it was Kevin Knight who picked up the win by pinning uh, Akira to become the brand new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. And according to official records... Uh, Knight is the fifth African American to win this particular title. It's pretty good, and I don't know how many times Kushida has won this belt, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. Now our next match is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title with Yoshinobu Kanemaru versus Hiromu Takahashi. Now this match was set because Hiromu made the decision to a uh, challenge uh, Sonata. Now some of you could say back then, a while back, 
there is no way that Sonata would have played. But we know that Hiromu has faced heavyweights in the past. If you don't believe me, check out his rivalry what he had with Evil. He was able to beat him no matter what. But he has to go through Kanemaru in order to get to Sonata. And I think that told on a fantastic story about it. But you probably can guess there was that Hiromu, who has been the top guy of the junior heavyweight division, was going to retain the title when he applied Time Bomb 2, giving him the win. So it's still unclear who will be the next challenger, but we do know that he will be facing Sonata for the belt. And he is, of course, Sonata's first opponent for his first uh, title defense. So we'll see when we get to wrestling Dodaku and go from there. Uh, I think for now, let's just move on with Impact Wrestling. Okie dokie, Impact Wrestling. It's been almost a while since we walked, since we, uh, Rebellion. We jump into what's going on now. Now, we opened up with Masha Slamovich taking on Jordan Grace. This is a very interesting match that we definitely will see. This is not the first time these two have faced off. We know that when Jordan Grace was the Knockouts champion, uh, Masha Slamovich challenged her and walked away. But this is, of course, a nice, easy way for Jordan to try to get back at the top. As you know, when she was unable to win the knockouts championship at rebellion but the match was pretty good uh very solid but in the end it was of course uh jordan grace pinning um slamovich to get the win so this could put her back on the top to get another title opportunity when it arises now joe hendry showed some photos from her from his rebellion looks like uh from his opponent he had a broken nose so he will be Recovering real soon. Uh, don't know if there's any indications about the future of the digital media title. That is still unclear just yet. Uh, and the, then we have, of course, uh, Steve Macklin coming out, you know, saying things about PCO. People were calling him a coward for walking away from him. I mean, he is the kind of guy who does is not afraid of anybody, but it seems he was. But PCO comes out when, of course, uh, Macklin calls him out. But out of nowhere, here comes Champagne Singh and his dog, uh, Shara, attacking him. But it did not do any well. But however, Santino Morella, laying down the law, said that he's going to put Singh in a match against against PCO while Shara was banned from ringside. But you can guess that this match ended with PCO applying the PCO salt. One, two, three. So you can tell that Macklin has to be Paying attention what PCO has done. So we'll see about that. Now, the designer is still pissed after what happened in Rebellion. Everybody has talked about this for a while. Some people thought that maybe if Sammy was doing this to fool the design. That always been the question. And I think Diener is starting to see maybe everybody was right. Maybe he was pulling my chain. Maybe he was making a mockery out of me. That I think Diener is starting to say... That maybe he he was that he was wrong, that maybe he should not have trusted Sammy from the very beginning when he said that he wanted to join, so that kind of sets it in, you know. So now this feud between them is far far from over. Now we have Johnny Swinger ta uh, taking on a wrestler named El Denerico. Now it doesn't take a genius who was behind that mask until it was over. We knew this match was a ploy, of course. Um, it turned out to be De Nerico because Johnny Singer won. That kind of plays it out. But one thing I did like is Santino Morella actually comes out, like, catching them in the hands in the cookie jar. Of course, I know Santino Morella. I didn't expect that he was going to talk Spanish fluently, but it worked. <laughs> but... Of course, um, Santino Morel uh, did not like what he see. But, of course, uh, Johnny Swinger kicked out uh, Zicky Dice out of the, <laughs> the dungeon. I thought that was crazy. But it was really funny. Now, Kenny King had an interesting match during the BTI, but I didn't see it. But it seems like he has taken into Sheldon, uh forgot his name, this guy who who fought against um, 
Joe Hendry at Rebellion. Now, Sheldon is saying, what is in it for you? You know? I don't know exactly what Kenny is trying to do. But if I have to guess, maybe he wants to start his own faction. It's the possibility. We've seen guys like who were in factions, they start factions of their own. So that kind of sets it in. But we'll see what happens to then. Now, our match we have is the design more consistent with Angels and Khan taking on the Bullet Club's ABC, Chris Bay and um, Ace Austin. But during the midst of this match was happening, we did see Santino and Morello was attacked once again. Last time we we thought it was, of course, the design, but we just don't know if it's, that's the case here or not. But, however, uh, Dino tried to get involved in this match to ensure that, of course, the design wins their matches. But Sammy gets involved, distracting the design, giving the ABC the, the win. And you probably can guess that this feud between the design and Sammy is not even over just, just yet. Now, Santino Morell, as you know, when he got beat up, uh, they were trying to tell him to go home. But they found a, a hair sample. I don't know what Detective Dirty Dango is thinking. He said he thinks he can figure out who did this. I don't know. But if he's going to pull it off, we'll see. We'll see who's been pulling the strings. Now, as you know, what we saw, the Death Dolls are unable to head back to the death, uh, to the undead realm. Here comes a familiar face, Crazy Steve. Now, Steve kind of gave advice to um, Rosemary, telling her, have you talked to everyone? There is one person that she may have to talk to, but they're not in terms. And, of course, that is none other than Father James Mitchell. So, it's like, here we go. Let's see if... If what's her name, Rosemary, is willing to do something about it. But we'll see. Our next match we have is Jody Threat taking on um, Zalia, uh, Zalazia Sparks. I don't know who she is. She's a wrestler down in Canada. Uh, but I can tell you this. that This match ended with Jody Threat winning when she applied the um, F416. And it was over right from there. Now... Our main event is a the Knockouts World Championship between Taylor Wilde and Deanna Perrazzo. Now, recently we saw Taylor Wilde declaring Deanna Perrazzo a fraud. But we know that Deanna Perrazzo is a good, capable wrestler. Uh, I have to say it was a pretty good match. But I figured this was going to end with Deanna Perrazzo winning. But of course, right at the end, we all knew that Covenant was not going to let this happen or slide. So they attacked her instead as well. But in instant, Jordan Grace saved Deanna Prazo, unclear why. Now, later on, it was later told on Twitter that Deanna Prazo and Jordan Grace will face each other one last time in um, Under Siege. But if Deanna Prazo wins the match, then Jordan Grace will not get another title shot as long as Deanna Prazo is still the champion. So that's going to be a very difficult thing. So we'll see what happens next week. Uh, I think right now we're going to move on to our final review, Ring of Honor. Okay, now we got Ring of Honor, which is our last review right now. It opened up for the ROH Women's World Championship Proving Ground match. Now, those who are new to the channel don't know what that is, or those who haven't seen Ring of Honor know what it is. This is more like an Eliminator type of match setup, except the only thing you need to do is two things. Either one, you beat your opponent, champion opponent, or uh, you last long as possible until the time limit draw. So basically, if you do that, you get a title opportunity. But so far, there hasn't been anybody that do that. But right now, Athena has to face against the coolest wrestler. We're talking about Lady Frost. Man, it's great to see her. I mean, Lady Frost is one of one of my favorite wrestlers because she reminds me of Frost from um more from Mortal Kombat. If you guys know what I'm talking about, but she's always impressive what she can do. But, of course, you probably can guess that this match was going to end with Athena winning the match, which she did, you know. But, of course, once again, with her behavior waves after the match, she whacks Frost right in the face with the title. Now, we do get a little video package from the Kingdom. 
They felt they've been disrespected for far too long since the revival of Ring of Honor. Now, their initial plan was to win the tag team titles in honor of Jay White, but they feel wrestlers like Top Flight, they're a threat to them. They felt like they disrespected them in every way possible. So they're going to do whatever it takes to get what they want, to put respect into their name. But the obvious question is, will they get that respect or they'll do whatever it takes to get back on the top? Now, our next match is tag team action. We got the infantry consistent of the captain, Sean Dean, and of course, uh, Carly Bravo taking on LFI's Vance, and of course, Rouge, along with that Weasel Jose. But you probably can guess this match was going to fall in favor of, um, of the L LFI because, you know, they're like the most dangerous group ever. But it took only the bull's horn by. Roosh onto, uh, who was it he gave it to? Onto Bravo? Yeah, onto Bravo. One, two, three, it's over. Now, our next match, we got the best friends taking on, um, Mooski Summer and Joe Oscasio. Now, we know that the best friends have never, ever, ever, ever held the ROH tag team title, so anything could change. So this could help them put them in the, how do I say, tag team title consistency for Ring of Honor. We will know soon enough, but it was a somewhat of a doomsday type of move onto Summers that gave, of course, the best friends the W. Next up, we got Brian Cage taking on Leo Ruff, and I have to say, Leo Ruff always has those moments where we see he's like the ultimate underdog type of wrestler you see. But at some point, some things will go wrong because a guy like Brian Cage will not stay down no matter how think you can, can put him down on the ground as much as possible but it doesn't it took only a submission by brian cage to put away of course um leon ruffin so you probably can guess that's how it goes next up we got the trust buster sunny kiss and jeeves k taking on the dark order consistent of evil uno and Stu grayson now before the match even started members of the righteous consistent of vincent and that show up now we know they have an interest in Stu Grayson because they believe that since Stu Grayson left the Dark Order that they moved on without him so they're trying to convince them you don't need them Stu they left you hanging they moved on without you but thing is this now that he's back it could put the Dark Order on the map but however we know that they're not gonna let this uh, appearance by the righteous try to get in the way of their match but of course, the match ended with of course with um with Uno pinning uh Jeeves K and boom it's end. But right at the end of this match, they were trying to confront them. Like Stu was like saying, "What the hell do you want from me?" It's like there's they're there's laughing, smiling. Like we want you to join us. Come on, this is where you belong. But I don't know if that's what Stu Grayson wants. So we'll see about that. Now. We do see a little interview with Christopher Daniels by Dasha Gonzalez. Christopher, as you know, recently he's been trying to get back on the top, but apparently things have not gone according to plan. So now he's making a beeline to none other than the Samoan machine, Samoa Joe. And we'll see how that goes. We know those two go way back, so that's going to be interesting to follow. Next up, we got Diamante versus Sky Blue. Now, Sky Blue has been now been saying she could be in line for a title opportunity. So that it kind of we had to pay attention to this match. It was a pretty good one, but it took only a roll up by Sky Blue to pick up a win against Diamante. So not bad for that particular match. But however, because this was mentioned that she could possibly be the next title contingency again for against Athena, well. The champion decided to come out, sending a direct message to her by stomping on her favorite hat. So, yeah. Now, our next match, we have Lee Moriarty along with that with Big Bill versus the king of sneaky style. We got uh, Rocky Romero. Now, I thought this match was going to go with Rocky, but that bastard effing Bill gets involved, making sure he... Gets him away, and it gives Lee Moriarty the win. But however, Rocky Romero is saying that he's going to challenge him next week in a Pure's Rules match. I highly doubt that this match is going to be where 
Bill gets involved because the rules are a lot more different in a straight up match. So we'll see how that goes. Now, our main event features Gringo Loco versus Blake Christian. Man, this match was pretty good. You know, these two are amazing high flyers. If you guys haven't seen them, check their 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 resumes on GCW. They're they're pretty good. But in the end, it was of course Blake Christian who walked out as the victor when he applied the 450. One, two, three, it's done. Just like that. So I think that's pretty much it with Ring of Honor. I believe it's time for our final thing, news updates. Okay. So welcome to our news update. So this is what we have so far. Fightful Select reports that Sol Ruka will be sidelined for some time due to a torn ACL. Now, this has now been talked about in in social media by many people. Talk how many more people re, re, female wrestlers torn the ACLs, I and mean, we've seen that already with a bunch of them. So this is something we don't know, but we can all hope that uh, Sol Ruka gets a well and a recover from it and we see her again back in the ring black label pro has revealed that for this saturday's event uh steph and lander will not be participating in their show but uh it was later told that they she will be replaced by none other than dan the dad which is a good thing now for all you yoshi fans out there especially those who live in new in new york city area house of glory has announced for the Beware the Fury, Miyu Yamashita will be making her debut on that day on the 19th of May. However, there's still no indication who will be her opponent. And I can't wait to see that. Now, uh, let me, I have this. For those who don't know, for the Queen of Indies show taking place on the 13th of May, they already announced for like what the card is going to look like. So let me pull that up right now. So we can get a clear eye view exactly. It's going to be, uh, here it is. For the round one matches for the Queen of Indies tournament, we have Mash Slamovich versus Hyan, Queen Aminata versus Maria, Lady Frost versus uh, Dulce Tormenta, and then finally, Unagi Sayaka versus Billy Starks. Now, there are other matches they have announced that probably will happen in between the tournament. Uh, we do have... She, um, Nagayo, Takumi, and Monroe taking on Lady Apache, Savoy, and Charisma. And then there's a tag match that later uh, announced uh, Milo and Riverta taking on uh, Robbie and Havoc. And then, of course, another one is the special attraction. Mio Momono will be facing the tryout winner. So that's going to be good to know. Uh, uh, News coming from uh, Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling, it was later told that there was supposed to be like a trios tournament taking place in Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling. But however, one of the teams has to forfeit their matches uh, involves Nao Kakuda. Now, Nao Kakuda will be absent for some time due to family circumstances. Now, no specifics have been detailed what it is, but she will miss out um, the this tournament and all the matches she was supposed to be involved are forfeited. Now... Those who are in New Japan fan base here in the U.S., uh, they announced for some upcoming events that they already announced. Now, if you guys are from these areas, then you should pay attention. Now, as you know, we got the Resurgence event in Long Beach taking place on the 21st. Anybody from the Toronto area, we do know that's going to be the Forbidden Door. So, you're probably going to get tickets for that. And then, of course, if you're in the Philly area, as you know, they announced this already. The All-Star Junior Festival will be taking place on the of August and then finally the day after there's going to be another multiverse united with impact wrestling on that very particular day on the fall on the 20th so I'm looking forward to that now they already I uh, failed to mention on the New Japan stuff on the review they announced for participations for the best of the super junior so this is who we have now starting with block a we have Kushida Taguchi Leo Rush Doiki, our current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, um, Hiromu Takahashi, Titan, TJP, Taiji Shimuri, Sho, 
and of course, Speedball, Mike Bailey. Now for our B block, this is who we have. We have El Desperado, Yo, Master Watto, one half of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Kevin Knight, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Bushi, Robbie Eagles, Francisco Akera, Dan Maloney, and Clark Connors. So these are the ones that will participate for the best of the Super Juniors starting soon. I can't wait to see it. Now, if you guys are in the uh, Iowa, Idaho, whatever they're going to be at for uh, Wrestling Revolver, then you guys are in for a treat. Konosuke Takeshita will be making his debut on the Ring of Destiny on the 17th of June. So if you guys are big Konosuke Takeshita fans, you definitely want to see that one. And I'm sure probably will see it online. Now, our final update we have the for the GCW stuff. For the fight night on the 11th of May, we have... Charles Mason taking on Jimmy Lloyd. Now, uh, for our next match for the The Way I Am on the 20th of May, we have Joy Janela versus uh, Ninja Max. So that's going to be a very interesting match to, to look at. So I think that's pretty much it for our news update. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we have NXT Level Up, which is going to be exciting. And of course, we have AEW Rampage. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put anything behind, but I'm a little behind on the GCW stuff, so that'll be soon enough. But as we speak, we do have the uh, Pro Wrestling Wave that features the final match for Himika. Now, her final match with Stardom was at the All-Star Grand Queendom, but this is her last official match as a pro wrestler. Uh, we have members of the Stardom roster being there, and I haven't seen anything, but if, there's any, if I ever get the chance to see it, I'll review that, but if not, then I'll see what I can do for that. Uh, stay tuned for more on the Unagi Sayaka watch. There's some stuff that came about that definitely we got to be talking about. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for now. I'll see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.